Do you want to be on camera or just your disembodied voice? Disembodied voice, okay. Well, you can say hello. Hi. 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 With mum. This is mum's Christmas present to go and see Wicked today. Yay! But right now we're getting coffee because we have half an hour. We have half an hour. I want to say hi again because the first clip was a bit chaotic. Hi. Hi. We're seeing Wicked today at 2.30 p.m. It's my mum's, I was about to say birthday present, it was Christmas present. So we're seeing Wicked today. Actually, it's finally. closer to Mother's Day. <laughs> I was going to say that because the thing is, I was going to say, oh, it's kind of a Mother's Day present as well. So like, why do I have to get you something Sunday? <laughs> Should I not? Should I just force Tristan to get you something? No, it's fine. Right, okay. Don't worry. Anyway. It's close to his birthday to me. Yeah. Uh, we've got the theatre cafe book tonight as well. So that's kind of like your Mother's Day meal. Um, yep. It works. <laughs> so on the train, we actually got the coffee. We got the parking space. Eventually. Eventually. And I'm finally seeing something new. Well, not new. I've seen it before. We've seen it before, about five years ago. But never in London. So... <laughs> But yeah, I'm finally seeing something on these videos that is yeah. not Book of Mormon or Back yeah. to the Future. Oh, my nails. So I just wanted to quickly show off my little nails because I was like, I was at work yesterday and I was like, I don't really have a costume because I always do costumes. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do something festive, something fun. I wanted to show off my nails because I was at work yesterday and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to wear tomorrow. So instead of wearing like a combination of musical theatre merchandise, but I was like, I want to do something wicked like, you know. So I did Elphaba on one hand and Glinda on the other. So I've got pink and green. We made it to London. Give me a sec. We just need to find any bridge, basically. What's that one? Alright. <laughs> There's me being all confident, like, we don't need Google Maps. I go here all the time. Mum's actually the one who knew way better than me. Oh, kitchen! So, surprise, it's just me in the theatre now. Not long after that clip at Waterloo Station, Mum fell. Uh, we had to call the ambulance because she split the bridge of her nose. It sounds tragic and this has taken such a dark turn. Uh, but I called ahead to the theatre so hopefully she'll be fine uh, to you know, come and whatever. Uh, they said they'd be able to let her in, which is great news because she's all patched up now. She's fine. I've been checking on her. But she was like, you go, you go have fun. Like, it doesn't matter if I miss some of it. Um, We'll still be able to go to the cafe later because, as I said, she is fine now. But there is the case of, you know, her missing a little bit of it. But it's fine. I'm just a bit upset. It was a lot. So I'm sorry I haven't been with you. But I'm here now. I uh, can finally relax a little bit knowing that she's fine and she'll be here at least for the interval. So... I'm gonna go ahead and show you my view because it's really good. Uh, let's do something positive. So this is my view from the dress circle. I'm in a C, so it's near the front, but not quite at the front. And it is seat three that I am in. Mum will be in seat four, uh, hopefully, when she gets here. I'm sorry this took such, such a dark turn, but you know, you live with it, these things happen. You know, despite me being a bit upset, these things happen and no one kind of prevented it. It's just kind of upsetting that this was, you know, her Christmas present and she can't be here for at least the opening of the show. But we saw it before five years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, oh, I'm happy she's not here. It's just kind of a case of, well, she's seen Act 1 before. So uh, it, it could be worse. That's all I'm saying. Guess who showed up? It was mum. Um, it was an emotional reunion, wasn't it? Yeah. I already talked about it, and then I think the second I put the camera down, I started crying. Uh. Anyway, we're here now. 
ready for act two and mum's fine. <laughs> it's raining. Yeah. Oh yeah. But we're gonna get some food now because we're both really hungry after what's happened today. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be happy once we've got some food in us. But you know, we still had a good time. They wasn't ruined, it was just different. because this is the first time that I am filming on my new phone, which is great. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Wicked. Yes, I got my new phone shortly after um, going to Wicked because my other phone was literally on its last legs. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the show. I actually forgot the program, so I'm just going to go grab that. Here is my Wicked program. I kind of wish they did um, smaller ones. Because normally I get the brochures for like, you know, the show information and all of that. That's why I have a Mormon one, because love it. 
Um, but I, I kind of wish they did smaller ones for, you know, easier carrying around. But, you know, this is the one I ended up with, obviously. They're a bit pricey, but, you know, gotta get a souvenir for every show. So I'm gonna be talking about Wicked. I'm actually kind of sad. And it's not because of the sort of failure in the trip, it was because I didn't see the Glinda that I wanted to see. We had an understudy Glinda, who was Lisa Ann Woods, so the programme that I have came with the sheet that, you know, says um, the role of Glinda will be played by this person. Um, I really wanted to see the new Glinda because we did go, I think maybe a week, two weeks after the cast change, uh, so that's a shame, but... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still glad I saw the show and I it means I might go back just to see her as Glinda because I think it, you know, it's it's nice. So, I'm going to start out with positives in the show and then I'm going to talk about a few things that I think bother me about Wicked. Like, it's not a bad show. Like, it's a, it's a visually beautiful show. Like, that's what I love. I love the set, the costumes, especially the Emerald City ones from One Short Day. They are so good. Um, I just, I, I love Elphaba's um, Act 2 dress as well, that's that's so pretty and it's so intricate. Um, it's made up of so many colours as well, like you see it from afar and it just looks like a black dress. No, no. There is like purple, brown, there's some like, you know, different undertones in it. It's so pretty, there's even like pink in it I think. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful costume. The costuming in this show is something I absolutely love. Um, and that's not it. That's not the only thing I like. The music is really good and it's very consistent in what style it's going to be. Defying Gravity is a moment. Uh, popular is also a moment. Um, an unpopular opinion here. I, I kind of like the song Sentimental Man. Maybe it's because I like the wizard as a character. Sue me. So yeah, those are like the main, main positives that I have about the show is that it's just so pretty to look at. The music's great, the acting was great. Um, I think the grey area for me, and it doesn't mean it's bad, the grey area is that it, you know, sets itself up to be a prequel to The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> what I don't, like, understand is that it is, you know, set up to be a prequel to The Wizard of Oz. And that's because, like, I, one thing I do appreciate is that it shows the ending of Wizard of Oz in the show. Because then it kind of sets it apart from the movie just a little bit, um, and it being its own thing, which, you know, I can see as. I can enjoy it when it's presented as its own thing, which I think it does a great job at by including the ending with Dorothy. What I don't like is the fact that whenever I think about it being a prequel to The Wizard of Oz, I have to imagine The Wicked Witch of the West from the original movie kissing the scarecrow from the original movie and it just doesn't work for me um so i think that personally the only way i can enjoy wicked is by seeing it as its own separate story based on the wizard of oz and the universe and the characters because i cannot see it as a prequel no matter how hard i try it just does not work for me and also just the fact that they can't use the ruby slippers is just also a kind of thing where i'm just like that's that's not really the wizard of oz um so you know call me crazy but i i have to look at it as its own story based on that universe because i'm just, just thinking of all the connections now especially alpha burn fierro's relationship can't do it. So yeah, I have to look at it as its separate thing and at, on its own, as a separate thing from The Wind and the Wars, it is a good story. I just think it drags a bit. I think it's a bit too long in some places. I feel like there's maybe a few scenes that can be shortened or even cut, to be honest. Um, like, I know you have to set up the relationships that the characters have with each other and that's kind of important, but there, there are some bits that just, I feel like, go on for way too long. The scenes could be improved in that sense to sort of make them a little bit, you know, hurry this up. Um, but not in a bad way, like I don't want them to rush it, but maybe just like a little bit better pacing in the script. <laughs> One thing I will say is that I prefer British Glinda than I do to annoying American Glinda, because in the movie Glinda is the sort of regal presence in The Land of Oz. 
Um, whereas in like the original Broadway cast recording and just pretty much all the Broadway casts, she's like the annoying ditzy like American blonde and I don't like her like that. I like her as this just regal up herself but also very kind like I, I prefer her like that you know it's it's more watchable yeah to me it's just a better characterization of Glinda and it's a bit more true to the original I know I didn't say I wanted to relate it to the original but also yeah another thing I like is the sort of redemption of Elphaba and the fact that she's a bit more misunderstood and that the wizard is kind of the true villain of the story because technically in the Wizard of Oz movie, he is kind of the villain as well, and so is Glinda. So, like, I, I do kind of like the humanization of Elphaba in this version. Like, she's not just an evil witch by Act 2. Um, like, she has character motivations and that. And I think one thing that made that really strong was the situation with the monkeys. Because of her, instead of her, like, using them like she does in the Wizard of Oz movie as, like, her personal servants and that kind of stuff, her henchmen... Um, while that is the same in the show, she has a bit more of a human connection with them and I think that's important to the rest of the story and how it pans out. So yeah, those are just my thoughts on like the show in general and how I think it could be improved and also why I look at it as a separate story to The Wizard of Oz. But I wanted to shout out a few of the cast members. I kind of already did that with Glinda because I was just saying how much I prefer the characterization in any UK version of the show. Um... Yeah, I, I don't like her being ditzy. I feel like that's too cliche for a blonde character. Who knows? So the woman playing Elphaba, and I'm probably going to butcher the hell out of this name, so I'm very, very sorry because she was amazing. Her name is Alexia Kademy? 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 I don't know. Please just forgive me for that. But she was a great Elphaba. She was very, like, I don't know, like, she played it very very naturally and she had a very natural humor as well which I think comes with the character for her like like I don't think she should be snarky I feel like she kind of wears the bullying on her shoulder basically like she takes it with pride and it makes it really funny yeah she just had like great natural comedy her voice was amazing obviously <laughs> singing Defying Gravity um but yeah she was just really really strong and you know her and um Glenda did have like a very natural bond together like it didn't feel like you know they were forced to be friends I mean they kind of were at the start but then they become like actual friends and I feel like it was a very natural progression and they nailed it perfectly and then there was also Ryan Reed as uh Fierro and I thought he was very very good very 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 good um, Fiero has this charm and this sort of presence, but he's also very, like, like, he's very, very caring. Like, I, I like how when he starts falling for Alphaba, like, he sort of shows his real personality. Because he has a bit of a fake one around everyone else, you know, like, he, you know, acts like he's this perfect person who's, like, very laid back and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I like how he shows his real personality to Alphaba, which also creates, again, a very natural relationship between them for them to fall in love. And I think this is interesting because um, with uh, Fiero and Glinda, their relationship isn't like that. It's very forced from Glinda's perspective because she's falling for him very, very hard um, and can't help herself. Um, so I feel like that makes their relationship unnatural. So I really like the contrast between that. So yeah, I think I've talked about the leads, like, a lot, and there is there is one thing that I really want to mention, being a trans girl myself, um, and that is that I saw someone in the ensemble uh, track, um, I'm gonna guess AMAB, I'm not gonna use, like, <laughs> gendered pronouns for them because I have no idea and I couldn't find anything in the program about it. They were definitely an AMAB sort of mass presenting person. But they sort of had gender neutral twists on the costumes, which I thought was so inclusive and cute. And it it kind of gave me a reassurance that we are moving forward in this sort of um, industry. And that's so special. So, for example, I'd like to say that their um, uh, Shiz University uniform, it was called sort of a... Um, mix between the female and male costumes they had sort of the male top half and then they had sort of a a mix of trousers and a skirt like it was trousers and then sort of a billowing skirt around it and i just loved it and they also had like 
such similar costumes throughout the show. So I feel like it was a, a sort of actor personal choice for those costumes to be done like that. And the fact that they did um, is very inclusive and I love it. So moving forward, yay! <laughs> Not like the rest of the UK. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Wicked. I really enjoyed the show. I do really want to go back and see Lucy St. Louis as Glinda because she was the one I was kind of looking forward to. Not that I didn't like the other one, I just, I would like to see the main cast. Um, I was saying this to my friend the other day and this is an upcoming vlog. I took her to Mormon for the first time. First time she had ever seen it. And I tell you, I was so happy when I saw that there were no understudies on, there were no swings or anything. Well. There was, but not in the main roles. And, you know, I, I was just glad that she saw the, I guess, authentic cast. Um, and because Wicked isn't something that I'm going to go back and back and back to, like I do with Book of Mormon, because I love it so much, you know, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't get the authentic cast. But I love understudies and I appreciate them so much, because, like, how, how, how do they do it? I, I feel like if I didn't do the same thing every night and just had, like... I don't know, three months off without doing the show and then was just thrown in. I'd have no idea. So mad, mad props to understudies and swings and all that. I mentioned that in my Hamilton one a little bit because I think a couple people that I saw in Hamilton covered like five tracks or something. Like what the hell? Uh, no, but anyway, that is the end of this Wicked vlog. It was a bit of a disaster, not gonna lie. Um, but, you know, we still had a good time. Theatre Cafe is amazing. Uh, and yeah, so I'll see you in the next one. It's another Mormon vlog. Yay! <laughs> Bye.